Benvenuti scholars, my channel is all about helping you graduate with your doctorate. And today, I'm going to show you tricks to proofread and fix formatting issues on your prospectus, proposal, or dissertation before submitting it for any review. Are you having trouble removing comments and track changes from your document? Have you figured out how to automatically update your table of contents? How about random spaces in your navigation bar in the left of your document? If you're on the verge of graduation, then you need a wet signature in your front matter. Do you know how to do that? Stay tuned for hassle-free instructions to fix all of these formatting issues. Okay, first let's address track changes and removing comments. To get ready, open a document on your second screen and find these areas in the Home tab of the top toolbar. If you haven't done so already, just scroll down the document to look for any signs of track changes. Here you see one. Let's get rid of it. First, click on the Review tab in the top toolbar. Then click on the down caret sign to see the drop down menu. Then choose Accept All Changes and Stop Track Changes. You'll see that the track change in the document is now gone. Next, let's get those leftover comments. Again, go to the Review tab on the top toolbar. This time, in the Comments section of Review, click on Next, which is almost right under the word Review on the top. This will take you to your first comment. Then slide your cursor to the left by two spaces until you get to Delete. Click on the drop-down menu and select Delete All Comments in Document. When that happens, you'll see your document actually changed to one page instead of the page plus the margin area to the right where comments live. Now that there aren't any comments, the margin area disappears. For safe measure, let's just double check everything. Again, click on the Review tab. This time you will click Next, but it's not the same Next that you just clicked. Instead, this Next is located to the right of the Reject option in the Changes area of the Review tab. Now when you click on this Next, you'll get the message that you wanted like a Christmas present from Santa. A pop-up box will appear that says, there aren't any comments or track changes in your document. We've covered Topic 1, on to Topic 2. Now we're going to fix the navigation bar. There are three typical errors that occur in the navigation bar. Incorrect spacing, words identified as headings that are actually text and not headings, and missing headings. The easiest to fix is incorrect spacing. Click on the empty space in the navigation bar and the cursor will go to that problem in your text. Place your cursor at the beginning of the blank in your text and click the delete button on your keyboard. The text will move up and the empty space will delete the nav bar. If that doesn't work, then try this. Select empty space as if text were there. In reality, Word may have something linked there that you don't see. Just keep the space selected, go back to the style section, and below the ABCD boxes, you'll see an option to clear formatting. By clearing formatting, the unwanted space in the nav bar should now have disappeared. Problem solved. Removing headings that are actually text is also really easy. First, click on the navigation bar on the offending heading. The cursor will take you directly to that text. Simply select everything that was mislabeled as heading. Then click on the Home tab in the top toolbar. To the right in the Home tab, you'll see a section called Styles. You'll see one box identified, and here is the answer to your mystery. That highlighted section was identified as that heading. To fix it, just click on Clear Formatting at the bottom, or click on the heading now called Normal in the top row. This is the fifth choice from the right. Either way works. Sometimes you'll not see headings in the navigation bar that should be there. This could result in having a heading bolded but not selected properly in the style section of the Home tab. Let's fix that. Here you'll see that the summary and conclusion section is missing in the navigation bar in Chapter 2, but it is present in the text. Let's check the Styles tab. First highlight the words Summary and Conclusion. Next click on Home in the toolbar. 
Okay, there's the problem. Summary and conclusion are identified as normal instead of a heading two. All you have to do to fix it is make sure that the words are selected, then return to the style selections and click on the drop down carrot to see all of your heading choices. On the next line down, four boxes from the left, you will see heading two. Click on that box and now, summary and conclusion appear in the nav bar as it should. Now that we're done with the navigation bar, we will move on to updating the table of contents. This is an important step. Due to the iterations of adding and deleting text, the pages originally listed in your table of contents may now be different. To ensure accuracy, go to the top of your table of contents in your dissertation. When you move your cursor down into the actual table, a gray color seems to fill the table. You want that to happen. Left click and you will see the update table tab appear above the entry list of tables. Click on the word update and a pop-up box should appear. There will be two choices, to update the page numbers only or to update the entire table. I highly recommend the second choice, update the entire table. When you do that, any changes to the page numbers that happened during your iterative process will now be reflected in this updated table of contents. Easy! On to the last topic, the wet signature. Now this step should come with much joy because it means that you actually see the end of the journey. Yes, you can do this old school by printing out the page, signing the paper, taking a pic of the page, and then inserting a JPEG of your signature, but I'm gonna show you a much, much simpler way. First, erase any directions about adding the signature. Then, all you have to do is click on Draw in the top toolbar. Select the black pen, then sign your page and save your document. This couldn't be simpler. Now, if you're doing this on a laptop and using the cursor point, your signature may look a lot like what happens when you sign for a purchase on an old machine in the grocery store. If you care what your signature looks like, my students have reported that doing this step on their phone or on a touchpad created a signature that actually resembled their own. You may also want to use a stylus if you have a touch screen, and that generally comes out the most authentically. Either way, this is a big step in your dissertation process, so kudos to you, you're almost done. Now that we have covered all the major steps, the last one is to proofread one last time. This could take the form of having an editor look at your work or a trusted friend or colleague. In any case, make sure you are submitting your best work so you'll get the most effective feedback. Wow, look at how much we've covered. Believe me, taking these few extra minutes and going through these steps can save you days, weeks, and sometimes even months. Now that you have removed your track changes and comments in your document, updated your table of contents, and fixed your navigation bar, you'll be in better shape for your next document submission to your dissertation chair and or dissertation committee. In fact, if you use my tip for adding the wet signature, you were so very close to graduation, my friend. Congratulations. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful as you move toward official reviews of your dissertation chapters. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Let me help you get to graduation.